So is this, right now we've got a lot of things going on in the economy. A lot of people are very scared. They're very much afraid. What would you tell people when they're looking at the news and they're watching the Dow plummet and they're, they're looking at you know, 700, 700 billion dollar bailouts and they're wondering how we're going to make it, what kind of advice would you give them? What would you tell somebody how to stay out of that, that fear and that panic that's so rampant right now? Well, first thing is not to take the news so seriously. There are two things that are taking the markets down and affecting all of us. One are the facts. It is true we live in a society to the extent that we're living here physically and we're living in a particular economy, we're experiencing certain facts. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing. The other thing is the reaction that we have to those facts. That's what I would call the fear. Mm -hmm. When the fear gets all together with the facts, that's when this effect uh, of people panicking occurs mm -hmm. and people start taking the money from their bank accounts and uh, the stock market goes down, etc. Mm -hmm. So what is most important is not to take the facts so seriously. The facts, they change mm -hmm. day to day. So they are not real to the extent that everything that changes is temporary. Mm -hmm. What is real, what is true is that which is permanent and as what you teach and what I teach is our true essence, is the infiniteness, is that which we really are, is that connection with the source, that's permanent. Everything else is temporary. Everything else is something that we are experiencing. Mm -hmm. So to the extent that we don't take it so seriously, we won't get caught so much in that paradigm. We won't be identifying so much in, in, that, in, in that fact so that it doesn't become such a huge thing so that we don't get caught in the fear. Mm -hmm. But yes, there is definitely an opportunity for us to wake up because we recently had a bailout and of course that's something that a lot of people are angry about mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem that it has done much of an effect in the in Wall Street as it was Absolutely. initially a thought it would. Mm -hmm. And what's happening really is that we are putting a lot of money into the economy but the economy itself is, is sick. Imagine if you have a patient mm -hmm. and the patient has an internal bleeding then you can come and give a transfusion of, of blood to this patient. But the internal bleeding is still there, you can just pump blood, blood, and blood, still the problem is not going to be solved. What we're doing is we're reacting mm -hmm. to a particular symptom, but we are not dealing with the cause. So the cause in this particular economy would be the foreclosures. Mm -hmm. And why are the foreclosures happening? Obviously they're happening for many reasons. There is a speculation, there is greed, but there is also a culture that I think is very predominant in the United States, which is a culture of living beyond our means. Mm -hmm. And so we use uh, credit card money a lot. Mm -hmm. And so we use money that we don't have mm -hmm. to buy things that sometimes we don't really need, to impress people that sometimes we don't even like. Right. And we are all thinking that by doing so we'll be happy and everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. It's kind of getting caught in this uh, being hypnotized by this culture of the more you have, the happier you will be. Mm -hmm. Which of course we know that is not true. Mm -hmm. So this is the wake-up call that is coming for all of us, not just for Wall Street, but also for Main Street, to realize that living beyond our means for a long time is not going to work out. At some point, at some point, a crisis is going to happen, and that's what's happening right now. And basically what it is, is a correction. And in this correction that we are going through, it is an opportunity for us to make better decisions for the future. Absolutely. So this is a time to stop, not to panic, not to go and start taking the money out of your banks, but it's a, it's a, it's a time to, for us to look at what's happening and see if we can uh, shift our uh, way of, of, of doing business and beyond that our culture so that we won't get top, caught, caught in this situation again in the future. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were speaking to someone, let's say, who was really in, in third dimensional, dire financial straits right now, let's yes. say they're struggling with their mortgage, they're having a hard time making their car payments, you know, at the end of the month there just isn't enough money left over for them to pay all their bills, maybe they've got a lot of debt, and, and things are very serious for them right now, or at least they seem to be. Where would you start with someone in terms of what you would tell them right now to start accessing that happiness and to really begin to give themselves spiritual and even mental strategies to get out of the despair so that they can go to the next level? Great question. Well, first of all, there is something that we need to realize, which is that we cannot control the outer world. Mm -hmm. Whatever happens will happen. 
we cannot control the economy going up or down or interest going up or down. Those are things that are beyond our control. What we control is how we interpret those things. Mm -hmm. What we control is how those things make us feel. So what is really important for anybody is, like I said, don't take those facts so seriously because what is going to happen to you is that you're going to be worried about things in the future that haven't happened yet. Mm -hmm. And by you being worried about things that haven't happened yet, you will probably manifest those things because it's like this, this prophecy that you're creating yourself. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing is that the information that comes is just information about things that are happening right now. We don't know what's going to happen in the future, but what I do know is that if you're able to tap into the power of your mind, and if you are in a place of gratitude, mm -hmm. and if you're in a place of feeling abundant, regardless of the outer circumstances, you will be able to manifest that abundance. You will be able to better deal with information that is coming to you and to make out of it the best. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, the best practice I could say on a spiritual level is be in the now. The now is, is, is fully abundant. In the mm -hmm. now, what we experience is the full abundance of life. I'm not saying financial abundance. I'm just saying abundance of all that is. Mm -hmm. And just appreciate all those things that are present in our lives now and have full acceptance of things as they are now mm -hmm. and through that understanding and through that awareness we are going to have the right mindset if you will to better deal with those other things that we don't have control over and make the best possible decisions so that in fact we can manifest that abundance uh, and that abundance is not just financial but it's abundance in all aspects of life mm -hmm. so there is not, not, not such a thing as good and bad, right and wrong, people focus a lot in this dual way of thinking. Things are what they are. Even a crisis, the definition of a crisis is simply change. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you something that probably can be helpful for people. Change is inevitable. Transformation is optional. Transformation really implies that you accept the change and you see in the change a possibility for you to grow on a personal level and make the most out of it. And that's how you transform. And that's how you see transformation happening in nature. Even when you see, uh, you know, the butterflies, they come from, from, from the little, um, how do you call them? The, the, the cocoons. The cocoons. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is the, the imaginary cells that start to imagine the butterfly, but it comes from accepting what the co inside the cocoon, what you are. Mm -hmm. So the moment that you reject, that which you, you uh, resist, persists. And obviously that's not going to work. But if you accept things as they are, Mm -hmm. And you're able to take responsibility and basically from that place learn the lessons that, are, that these circumstances are giving you. You will be able to transform your circumstances and be abundant. Beautiful, beautiful. I love that. So you have the choice to transform, but change is inevitable, right? Correct. Change is inevitable, like crisis. Change crisis is really the same. Mm -hmm. And it's not good and bad. It's what is. It is yeah. So we don't want to make out of it something bad because that would be a label that we put in our minds that is going to lower our energy uh, vibration, if you will, mm -hmm. and it's not going to allow us to manifest that which is our, you know, that which is our birthright, which is living an abundant life. Absolutely. So to live that abundant life, we need to be connected with source. We need to be connected with that infinite source of energy that we really are. Of course, you won't do so if your mind is caught in all this paradigm of, of, of lack, which is really just a temporary material thing that is not truthful. It's not truthful to the extent that it's temporary as we were talking before. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Do you have any other pearls of wisdom that you'd like to share with us tonight? Well, I was just... Uh, sharing with you how I came to see you and I, I lost my, my cell phone mm -hmm. and I realized how dependent we have become of all these tools like the cell phone and the computers and it is clear to me that nowadays we have so many ways to communicate with one another but one thing is to communicate with one another another thing is to connect with one another mm -hmm. and I think that it is time for us to move from the age of information to the age of connection yeah. And connection happens from the heart, mm -hmm. and it happens because of that intent. And you can have uh, iPods, and you can have uh, computers, and, and you can have your MySpaces and everything, but unless you are able to uh, operate from this consciousness of high vibration, your communication is not going to improve your quality of life. Right. What will improve your quality of life is your ability to connect. 